Are you acting like the sun or the moon? Let's find out on today's podcast. I've spent the last 20 years studying, teaching, and coaching people to find their greatness and take their lives to the next level. Along the way, it's become evident that emotions are at the root of everybody's successes and failures. Worry and fear are the enemies, and it's time to forge the armor and earn the tools to overcome the two things that could single-handedly destroy your future. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson, and I'm a life coach, a peak performance trainer, and I'm the emotions guy. It's time to take back control, control of how you feel, control of how you act, and control of how you experience life. It's time to become a lifer, a new breed of overachiever focused on living every minute to its fullest. We are responsible for how we feel, and no one and no thing can make us feel anything. Emotional mastery is our journey, and emotional education and intelligence is the key. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast, and I'm excited that you joined me today because we're going to find out if you're acting more like the sun or the moon. Now, hold on with me now. We're just getting started, but this is a little bit... What? No, it's just a metaphor, really. Honestly, it's just a metaphor, something easy to deal with, uh, to think about this concept. Now, if we think about it, and we get in a little deep just about sun and moon, difference between the two of them, right? If you think about the moon, the moon is basically a massive reflector, right? It's a massive reflector. It is reflecting light from the sun back to us. Now, the moon can be super bright. You've all seen those really bright nights where The sun is down, it's totally pitch dark, but the moon is reflecting so well that it just lights up the night. And you've seen those, you've been in one of those situations. Now, the interesting thing is there, if maybe you were out on the ocean, that moon reflecting onto the ocean, then it reflects back, so it gets even brighter. So you have this reflection quality. Now, if you're the sun and you're in the daytime, That's just pure energy. The sun is creating the energy and it is pushing it out and brightening our sky, even when it's cloudy, even when it's, uh, when it's gloomy outside, the sun is still so powerful that it is still lighting up our world, even when the clouds are thick and the storms are raging, right? There's still some sun coming through. There's still some light and we forget about that often. Now, let's talk about it in terms of you particularly. So how can we deal with this one on or or directly with this metaphor? It's pretty simple. Are you being a reflector or are you being a creator, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with the moon and thank goodness we have it, right? It creates all sorts of cool things. However, it is indeed just a reflector. There's no source of energy. There's no source of actual light coming from that moon. It is just reflecting off what the sun created, the energy from the sun. Now, you have to ask yourself in this moment and just take a second to reflect, I know, see what I did there? That was nice, right? Take a second to uh, just think about this and say, well, what do I do on a regular basis? On a regular daily basis, am I doing more creating or am I doing more reflecting? And so right before I jumped on to do this episode, I thought, gosh, you know, what are some of the things that we are so very good at reflecting? Right? What are some of the things that we uh, reflect easily without even necessarily knowing it? And so I wrote down a few things, things we reflect well, other people's moods, other people's moods and their feelings. We reflect those really well. You've all had that experience. All of us have had that, that moment when somebody walks in the room and you look and you're like, oh, they're in a bad mood. And then all of a sudden the energy of the room and the mood of the room goes because that person just sort of killed the energy. Now, interestingly enough, they were being a creator, not a reflector, but the room, because they were so powerful in that creation of that feeling and of that mood, the room started reflecting it. Now they come in and they start to notice that the room is 
down and they go, gosh, why does everybody treat me so poorly? And they don't understand that maybe they created that for themselves. Hmm. That's interesting. We might have to take that and flip it in a second. So what's another one? We reflect other people's stories. I and mean, this is really the problem with stories, as you can uh, imagine, and maybe you've heard. When you tell a story, it's mostly not true, which is really weird to think about. And we could talk about that for hours. However, if we can understand that, right, there's always three sides to a story, your side, somebody else's side and the truth. And well, seeking the truth is important, but it's very challenging because we all see things super different. And so when you have a story, right, and you're reflecting other people's stories, let alone your own, you can imagine how much is lost in translation, right? So you're reflecting that story. It's a, a bit of a challenge. What else do we reflect? We reflect other people's beliefs, this is huge. Children do it all the time. They're reflecting the beliefs of their parents. They maybe haven't come up with their own belief system yet, but they're reflecting the beliefs of their parents. They haven't quite worked it out themselves. They haven't quite found the knowledge to be the creator of their beliefs. And so they reflect others' beliefs. And this is a big deal. And so you might want to look at it in your world and go, well, gosh, which beliefs am I reflecting and which do I know that I created. And that's an interesting idea and a concept to, to dig into. And current events. What, what do you reflect in the current events? You see, we all do it. We're all guilty. We get on social media, Instagram or Facebook, and we see some post and then we pass that on and we reflect it throughout our day or maybe even just to the person sitting next to you and you go, oh, did you see this thing on Facebook? And it's, we, we tend to reflect it and talk about it as if it were the truth, as if it were an absolute. And we do that all the time because maybe it sounded good or it invoked some type of emotion out of us, but we are merely reflecting something that we saw in a social media per post about current events. Maybe it was about the election. Maybe it was about uh, some sort of uh, big hot topic at the time, but we're reflecting. And when we reflect, it wasn't the creation of the information. It was a reflection of the information, which isn't always accurate, right? And if we take, how about the weather? We all reflect the weather differently. Some people you know, the, it will be raining. And I've said this numerous times, it's raining and I love the smell of rain. And so, oh, I love it when it rains because I love the smell of the rain. Somebody else comes in and they go, oh, I hate the rain. It feels so horrible and gross, right? And we're both reflecting something from the smell of the rain or from the rain itself. And we are reflecting, not creating. Right. And let's take a look at maybe our finances. This is another one I wrote down. I thought, gosh, this is this is a big deal, right? We reflect our finances through how our actions are. And so maybe if you're having a rough time with finances, you are reflecting that in some way, right? Because it's coming out of you and the words that you say and the things that you do, the actions or behaviors that you take are a reflection of what it is that's going on in your finances. And so these are all things that are challenging. However, you can be the creator of those things. And many of them is rough, right? Like you, you might have a current event. You might say, well, how am I gonna be a creator of the current events? Well, it's easy. You get to decide what it is that you want to talk about. You get to decide how it is that you're going to speak about something as a creator, you have to actually look at the source. You have to go and dig it up, right? And so if we're talking about current events, you're looking for the source of that current event and, and trying to find the truth, right? And I say that in air quotes if you're not watching this on video. And that's, that's a challenge, right? Obviously, the whole three sides to a story thing. But we want to be a creator, not a reflector, Right. The interesting thing, and I'll say this, another idea about how you're reflecting is if you go into a fun house, you know, maybe at a fair or something, and they have the warped mirrors, 
And what you see, if you never saw a straight mirror, if only a warped mirror was the only thing that you ever had, you would see that or maybe a cracked mirror and it was it showed like two or three reflect reflections of you. Those aren't accurate, but if that's all you had ever seen of a mirror, you might think that you are wavy or you're, you know, disproportionately shaped. And then if you saw a regular mirror, finally, for the first time, you'd go, well, what's that? Don't know what that is. That must be messed up. Right? So what we want to do is we want to try to take on an approach of being a creator and saying, okay, I want this, this is what I want. And one of the most challenging things that I uh, have to deal with and asking and working with my clients is pretty simple. What do you want? Very difficult to answer. And those that know exactly what they want are now getting closer to being the creator. And I'm talking about the specifics of what you want, because sometimes you ask for something like, oh, I'd love to be on the ocean and smell the scent of the sea. A year later, you end up in the service in the Navy. And that's maybe not what you were thinking of, right? But it was what you created. And so you have to be careful what you ask for. And I'm sure you've heard that before. But this idea of being a creator, being the sun in your world instead of the moon, this is a really cool, easy metaphor to remember. Be the sun in your world, not the moon. Don't wait to reflect other people's moods. Decide what mood you would like to be in. Decide the feelings that you would like to have. Be the creator of your finances. Be the creator of your beliefs. Be the sun in your world, not the moon. All right, I hope this helps today. And if you know somebody that you feel like this would make a big deal of difference for, please share the podcast with them. We'd love to be helping them as well. So please share the podcast. Please rate and review on Apple, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you here on a regular basis. And we are so thankful that you're here. We'll see you on the next episode. Hey lifers, we expect upgrades to the base operating functions of the things like our phones, cars, and even refrigerators. Why then has it not been made a priority that we upgrade the operating systems of our emotional states? We dance around the subject of emotional mastery from a young age. We have so much more knowledge in today's world, yet we're still teaching outdated methods of emotional education, if any are being taught at all. It's time for a change. It's time for an upgrade to our emotional education. Let me help you learn how to do that. Pick up your free copy of Every Minute at everyminutebook.com.